Hi guys, thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Mario Fusco, and uh, I'm here to speak about uh, uh, an old book. It's the Gang of Four uh, Book of Patterns. And uh, I started uh, doing this work. I started programming professionally about 20 years ago, maybe a bit more. And uh, at that time, that book was the Bible. So you, first of all, you, if you want to do object-oriented programming, you have to study the book. You have to learn uh, all the pattern uh, and, uh, and, uh, and most important, you have to use them. And the, the, the most you use them, the, 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 better, you, the better you are as, as a programmer, okay? Uh, and uh, I believe actually that uh, uh, that book at time had uh, some quite good benefit. Uh, the, first of all, uh, uh, it gave it gave us um, a common background, a common uh, vocabulary. Okay, if I say to my colleague, okay, I used a, st a strategy pattern here. Uh, everybody knows, my colleagues knows uh, what I did there. Okay, with uh, without the need of further uh, explanation. Okay, the biggest problem of that book is that uh, was uh, totally biased, or uh, it it used only one tool, the object-oriented programming tool. It was totally biased toward the object-oriented uh, uh, programming side, uh, and uh, uh, it it seemed normal at time. Uh, but uh, I think now it's time to review this pattern under a more uh, uh, functional programming line, uh, light and see if, if we can do better, okay? Uh, so that book was divided in section. There are different kinds of pattern, and probably the most relevant part of that book was the behavioral pattern, okay? I believe that uh, if today I give uh, that book to a smart student, uh, the first feedback will be, hey, why there is a, 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 a behavioral section on this book, on this object-oriented book? A, 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 an object is not a behavior, okay? A behavior is not a noun. A behavior is a verb. A behavior is a function. A, be, a behavior is not an object. So why this book, why the most relevant part about uh, this uh, uh, book on object-oriented programming is speaking about behavior. It doesn't make much sense, okay? This thing now, I believe, it is pretty clear now. It wasn't that clear at time, of course, okay? So uh, my idea is that to start from uh, uh, typical problem uh, uh, solved uh, with the, the typical Gang of Four solution, and check if we can rewrite this in a more functional, in a more compact, hopefully in a more readable way. Okay, so uh, my uh, the, the the example uh, that I'm showing you today are uh, uh, available at this uh, uh, repository in case you want to download them and give them uh, a second look. Okay, so let's start from a very simple but uh, I think a very typical example, okay? Um, what they did, since they, there, was, there wasn't the notion of function in that book, everything has to be an object, okay? So uh, a behavior uh, has to be wrapped inside an object. This is uh, typical, for instance, for the command pattern, okay? A command is an action, a command is a verb, a command is a function, it's not an object. Okay, what we do is we take this action and we artificially wrap it in inside a command because we need uh, to wrap the function inside an object. Okay, uh, so wh what uh, uh, we, we did, for example, we have this command interface, there's a, 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 one, a, only one single method, and then we have different implementation, okay? Uh, we have a command that uh, allows us to log something. We had a command to allow us to, to save it. And we had another a third implementation that uh, uh, allowed us, for example, to, to send that message via, via email, okay? 
And then we have an executor of uh, uh, those commands, okay, that uh, cycle the, the commands and, and execute them uh, one after the other. And then uh, what we did is put all these commands inside a, a list of tasks to be executed, and we pass it to this executor, okay? This is how the command pattern uh, works, uh, worked. It's very, very simple. But uh, uh, it's also unnecessarily verbose. I mean, uh, we don't need this uh, uh, object infrastructure. We need to keep uh, the, only the signal uh, among all this noise. And, and what's the signal here? The signal is just this. It's the, the action, not the common object wrapping it. Okay? So uh, what, for instance, I can do is taking this uh, and putting inside uh, a function. Okay? Uh, I call this log. Okay? Uh, why is it static? Because I want a pure function. I don't want an external state. So the aesthetic method is, is uh, today in Java the closest thing to uh, the common notion of function. Okay? So I have this uh, uh, function or method, if you want, static method, uh, to uh, log my message. I have, uh, of course, another one to, uh, what was it, is to save. And another one to send it. Okay? And uh, then what I can do? Okay, I have to do this stuff, of course. Uh, probably I can just uh, also rewrite it in a more static way, okay? Uh, I don't want a list of command. I don't want to create a, this other artificial interface. I already have in Java uh, an, an interface with exactly the same signature, okay? That is runnable, of course. So I can say that I want uh, a list of runnable here. Uh, and uh, what I can do is just uh, iterate all the tasks and run them. Okay? So now I can do exactly the same thing as I did before in my main. Uh, sorry, I didn't show you what happens here, but should be clear. Uh, all these tasks uh, are executed. Okay? So I actually, of course, want uh, the same effect. Uh, so what, uh, what I can do is this. Uh, of course, these are runnable. Okay. And now I can replace this uh, command object with plain lambdas. So I have the, log the logging one, the one that uh, does the saving and the one that does the, uh, what was it, the send. Okay. Uh, and at the end, I can just say execute. My list of tasks, my list of common, okay? So same result. Uh, so this is, I believe, very simple, very trivial, but again, shows uh, one very common thing, okay? I don't need to wrap my function inside the object anymore. They are function, let's treat them, uh, treat this stuff as pure function, okay? Uh, and uh, also, uh, there's another uh, point, I think. Uh, one of the main critics against Java is that uh, it is a very, very verbose language. Uh, and uh, of course it's true, 
compared to some a bit modern language. But uh, one of the reasons why uh, people say that Java is verbose is because I, I believe it's because people started using Java this way, using the gang of four, four pattern. And of course, uh, they ended up with this very, very verbose version of, 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 uh, of doing thing instead of just this. Okay, so uh, yes, Java is, is is a bit more verbose than uh, some other languages. I don't want to say this is not true, but uh, there are way, uh, especially in Java 8, of course, to make it a lot more compact. Okay, so uh, so we replaced the command with a function. Uh, let's see another similar uh, uh, pattern. That was the strategy one. So I have a T strategy, okay? My strategy here is a formatter of a text, and it has two behavior again, two function, that is uh, filtering the test to decide if I actually want to print the, the text on or not, and then uh, format it before printing, okay? So I have, uh, again, a different implementation of this, that is a plain text formatter that uh, just... Uh, uh, filter in everything. Uh, it, it doesn't transform the text. Uh, doesn't do any transformation on the text. Then I want for then I have for instance an error text formatter that uh, 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 prints only the text that starts with error. And since it, since it is an error, it prints everything in uppercase. Okay. And uh, the third one, okay, it, it's, it just uh, prints short sentences and uh, all in lowercase. Okay, just a trivial example. So uh, how I use this? I have a text editor, okay. This te text editor have, uh, is created with one of uh, this strategy, with one of these text formatters. So when I say to the text editor, uh, publish text, it uses this strategy uh, the, 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 the behavior encoded inside the, the strategy to uh, filter and transform the text before printing it, okay? So uh, in this case, the result is this. I'm using the error strategy, so uh, this is not printed, and this one is printed all in uppercase, okay? Uh, but once again, uh, instead of having all this infrastructure, the very relevant part of my code here is just this method, okay? It's just this. Okay? And now I need uh, to think. I need uh, the behavior of the strategy. What's th what is the behavior? Uh, I have the filter, and in my case, the filter is a predicate, right? It is passed with a string, okay? And the second thing is the formatter. That is just a function. Uh, from a string to another string. Okay? So what the text formatter did before can be just expressed uh, by using this uh, predicate and by uh, using the formatting function. It's exactly the same thing, right? So now how do I use this stuff? Uh, I can say publish my text, okay. And then I have to pass this to function. What the uh, error uh, text formatter did? It uh, uh, accepted only the text starting with error. So my predicate will be, will be this. OK. And then uh, I want everything in uppercase. So the transforming function will be this. OK. And then, of course, I expect the same result. OK. Feel free to interrupt me if you have questions, of course. OK. 
let's see another something different okay the the template pattern okay uh why i need this pattern why this pattern were used uh let's suppose that i have a resource okay this uh, resource has a few methods. Uh, I can use the resource or I can employ the resource, okay? But, but both these uh, methods are uh, risky operation, okay? Both may fail. Uh, I'm failing it uh, with, with a, a random factor, okay? Uh, and if, if it fails, it throws a runtime exception, okay? But the problem is that uh, after I have used this resource, I want to dispose it. I need to dispose it to avoid the uh, memory leak, to avoid the uh, file pointer leak, uh, and whatever. Okay, so I don't care. Let's say if if uh, the resource fail uh, when I use it, but I have to make sure that I'm disposing it. Okay, and of course this is not happening here uh, because. Uh, Okay, this was a lucky run. Uh, of course, I will have lucky run forever. Okay, it's failing. Uh, so what's the problem here? That the, the resource is created, then uh, the uh, first operation fail, and uh, I'm okay with it. What is really not okay is that the resource is never disposed. Okay, so how do you uh, do? I solve this problem uh, with the uh, template pattern. Okay, I make a template of how I want to use this resource. Okay, and the the, the template is, is that uh, I want to open the resource. I do. I want to do something with it, and then I want to make sure that uh, the close resource method is called inside a finally block. Okay, and I want to make sure that uh, all my uh, all the client of this API will will do that uh, uh, close inside the finally. I don't want to uh, give the possibility to my user to have a leak. Okay, uh, so uh, of course I have this template, and the template of course have uh, an abstract method that is what you want to actually do with the resource with the resource. Okay, so how uh, you use the template? Of course, you have to extend my template, uh, my template, and you have to implement the abstract method. Okay, and then uh, you can say uh, execute uh, this or execute uh, this other. And the execute method makes sure that everything is done uh, uh, inside this, and that the the resource will be disposed. Okay. Uh, once again, okay now. You learn the joke. I, I just need the signal. I don't want this noise. Okay, and for me, the signal is this method. Okay, uh, sorry. For me, the signal is just this. Okay, uh, so I want to open the resource. Let's say create a new resource. And uh, I want to close it inside the finally block. To dispose it inside the finally block. Okay. And uh, of course, I need to do something useful with this resource. How can I say to this method that I want to do something useful with this resource? I'll pass to it a consumer of the resource. Okay, and then what I do is just accepting the resource inside the consumer. That's all. Okay, so I, I obtain exactly the same result. So what I can do now is uh, executing this method. Uh, and uh, I have to pass to this a lambda, and what is the lambda is what I want to do on the resource, okay? So this is also called uh, the land pattern. Why? Because uh, this method is lending me the resource. Now I can use it, the resource, uh, do something uh, with it, whatever, 
okay? And then uh, the execute method to take the resource back after I, I've used it and dispose it, okay? And uh, of course, uh, of course, it may or may not fail, but even if it fails, I'm sure that the resource will be correctly disposed. Making make sense? Okay, next example. Uh, the observer pattern, okay. Uh, f f just for reason of time, let me, allow me to, to, to just skip this for now, but because it's very similar to the former one. You have, uh, instead of having a consumer of the event, you have a consumer of the resource, okay? I want to do the, the other first because they are more interesting in my opinion and, uh, uh, and uh, I'll uh, be back on this if I, if I have time. So let's see the, the decorator, okay? Uh, that uh, shows another very interesting concept uh, under a functional programming point of view, that is the function composition. Okay, so uh, what I have in this case? Uh, I want to, to implement a flexible salary calculator, okay? Uh, so what I have uh, uh, is that uh, I have a, a set of taxes that may or may not uh, be applied to my salary, okay? So I want a uh, uh, flexible way to add or remove uh, tax calculation from the uh, salary calculator, okay? Um, so what uh, I typically do, I do this with the Gang of Four uh, pattern uh, using the decorator pattern. Uh, so I have a, a, a salary calculator interface that is just, uh, uh, that contains just uh, an abstract method that transforms the double inside a, another double, okay? And then I have uh, a different implementation as usual of this interface. Uh, this one uh, uh, is just uh, uh, divided just uh, the, 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 the gross annual uh, salary by 12, of course. And then uh, I have to decorate this initial uh, uh, function, this initial method with uh, the taxes that I want to apply to them, okay? So I uh, uh, created an abstract class that contains the decorating logic because I don't want to repeat it inside the, uh, each decorator, okay? And this uh, uh, abstract decorator contains uh, 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 another sal salary calculator, okay? So uh, what it does is uh, uh, calculate uh, the value using the salary calculator containing inside it and then uh, uh, apply the tax that is uh, the operation done by the decorator itself, okay? This is how it works. Uh, so I can have a, a decorator that uh, 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 applies the general tax, I have a second decorator that applies the regional tax, and I have a third decorator that apply the health insurance, okay? So uh, how I use this stuff? Uh, the, the other problem of this, uh, this uh, pattern is that you have to read it from inside out, okay? So the core is the default salary calculator that takes the gross annual and divides it by 12, okay? And then I'm decorating it with the general tax, I'm decorating it with the regional tax, I'm decorating it with the health insurance. So if I run this stuff on uh, this gross uh, annual salary, I will have uh, the, uh, the monthly income net, okay? And uh, what's the advantage of this? Uh, uh, as I said, uh, it is just that it's flexible. Uh, so for instance, if uh, uh, for your specific case, uh, the original tax has uh, not to be applied, what I can do is just uh, 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 removing the, the original tax decorator and uh, for this specific uh, calculation, uh, it won't be used again, and then uh, I will have a, a higher value, of course, right? Okay, 
So this is very verbose, but not only verbose, this is very, very complicated, complex. But not complex, complicated is the right word, I think. Uh, because it's uh, lots of uh, uh, incidental, com incidental complexity. Uh, what I'm doing here, actually, uh, I'm doing just this. Uh, let me just take this first function, that is my starting function. Uh, and I, I don't want to use this uh, interface. I want to use one of the functional interface inside the uh, uh, Java 8. Uh, what is this? It's a transformer to, to a, a transformer of a double into another double. So it's a, a, a double uh, unary operator. Okay. Uh, so a double unary operator is just a functional interface where the only abstract method is this one. Okay. Is this method that is called applies as double? It just change it, changes the name, but the name is not important, as you know. Uh, uh, but what is important is the signature. Okay. So of course I have to uh, change the name here, and I'm done. Okay. And uh, how do how I do this uh, tax decoration? It's very stupid in functional programming because uh, I can start from uh, this uh, function. Uh, what's the name? Uh, it's this one. Okay. And then what I do? I just do function composition. This is this is the first function that uh, divides my uh, gross annual salary by twelve. And then uh, and then I want to apply the, the general tax, right? And then. I want to apply uh, the regional one, and then I want to do the same with the health insurance, and then at the end I can say apply a stable. I pass the original value, okay, and I'm done. That's all. It's just function composition. If I print this stuff. Uh, I will obtain exactly the same uh, the same result, okay? And uh, the other advantage is that uh, I read this in the in the in the right direction from top to down, not from the inside out, okay? And of course, if I don't want the original tax, pretty easy. I just comment this out, right? So. You see the difference here, right? It's quite evident, okay? Uh, we could also try to do uh, another exercise if you want. I would like, for instance, to, uh, I, I want to show this to emphasize the function composition pattern. Let's try to uh, provide to our uh, uh, user of, uh, to the user of our API uh, a method that uh, is called uh, uh, calculate that takes uh, the the gross okay and then it takes uh, uh, a varags of uh, uh, function okay that are the function that i want to apply to this gross salary and so i i want to pass to this method the gross salary a varags of function and i want to be returned with uh, with uh, the net uh, the net salary okay uh, how could I develop this? I could just uh, uh, put all this uh, function inside the stream. Okay. And then uh, I can create a single function out of this stream of function by a results operation. Okay. I want to do function composition of all this function. So I do a reduce, okay? And I have to pass two, of, uh, two value to this reduce. The first value is the zero, okay? And uh, what is the zero of the operation of, fun of fun function composition? The identity function, of course, okay?
right? And what's the uh, composition operation? It's just that and then. Okay? So what this does? It starts from the identity function, and then that, that does do nothing, of course. And then it composed with the first one inside the stream, and then with the second one. At the end of, of, of this reduction problem, uh, process, I will have uh, uh, the function that has to be applied to my gross salary uh, to obtain the result. Okay? So uh, if I want to use this, I could just say, uh, something is going wrong here. Okay. Sorry? Oh. Uh, yes, but there is something else that is going wrong. Uh, I don't understand what's going wrong here. Uh, okay. Okay. I have to use the end, not uh, the generic uh, and then of the function, but uh, the end then of the uh, of the uh, uh, of the double ordinary operator. Okay, uh, and then how 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 can I use this stuff? Um, I can just say uh, calculate uh, uh, by passing the gross salary, and then I can pass my uh, varargs of function. Okay, and you you got it. Okay, that's all. Okay. So next pattern. Any question? Okay. Chain of responsibility. This is another one that is pretty interesting. Uh, okay, what I want to achieve here. Uh, I don't know why it's not. Sorry, let me just uh, comment this out for now. I don't know why it is not compiling. Okay. Still not, sorry? I need a silicon. I don't, 29. <laughs> ah, okay, no, but uh, there is something that is not compiling here. Uh, I don't, don't understand why. Okay, uh, let me fix this. Sorry. Um, I have my original uh, uh, solution. Ah, stupid me. Okay, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, you need to the double unary operator both on the identity and the on the and then side. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, the chain of responsibility. Uh, okay, what I want to achieve with this? Uh, I have a file. I have a file. This file can be either a text, a presentation. Uh, uh, no audio or a video, okay? And I have a, a set of parser. Each parser is able to parse one of this kind of file, okay? Uh, so how do I use this uh, parser uh, using the chain of responsibility pattern? I create a chain of, uh, of, this, pa of this parser. Okay, so I have a, a parser that is able to uh, parse the text the file of type text, sorry. I have a file that is able to parse the, the file of type presentation. I have a file, uh, a parser that is able to parse 
file of type audio, and so on. Okay, and then uh, I have to uh, create a, a chain of this parser. Okay, so uh, I have uh, uh, I encoded this chain inside this uh, abstract file parser. Okay, so each uh, parser has a, a next, that is the next uh, 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 ring of the chain is the next item of the chain. So if uh, the first one is not able to parse the file, what it does is that if it has a next, uh, uh, it, will, it will delegate to the next, otherwise it will throw a runtime exception. And all the parser do basically the same, okay? So uh, what I have here, uh, and then I have to, of course, uh, instrument this pattern. I have to uh, chain this pattern together. So I instantiate it for parser. Uh, uh, and I'm saying that uh, the presentation pattern uh, comes next, the text one. Uh, and so, and the audio parser comes next to the presentation one and so on. Okay, so I created my chain of parser. Okay. Uh, and then I have a file that I want to pass, that is the wonderful, uh, the astonishing album of Dream Theater, that is an audio file, of course. Uh, and uh, so what happens here if I run this stuff uh, is that uh, the first parser that is able to pass in uh, only text file uh, don't know what to do with this, so it pass it forward to the audio one and uh, to the presentation one. Uh, same thing for the presentation one, it pass it forward to the audio one. The audio one finally is able to deal with this and will print the result. And since it, it is able to deal with this, it, it won't invoke the video parser at all. Okay, this is what happens. Let's try uh, once again to put all this parser inside function, okay? So uh, I will take this, uh, this one. And uh, I will do the same thing, okay? I don't have a, a chain uh, of, uh, of function uh, now. So I don't have something to delegate if I'm not able to, if I'm not able to parse this file. So what I do? What I do if I'm not able to parse this file? Should I throw a runtime exception? Uh, in functional programming, as you know, if you throw an exception, a kittens die. So you shouldn't, okay? And uh, what, what is the other option? I could maybe return null, okay? But if you use null in functional programming, the whole family of kittens die. So you shouldn't as well. Okay, so what is the third option? The optional, okay. So uh, this is a, a typical usage pattern use case for optional, okay. This method, this function may or may not return a result, okay. So i modeling the fact that I may or may not return a result by uh, uh, returning an optional here. Okay? So I will do... this. And of course in this case I will return an empty optional, right? And of course I can do exactly the same for all the other parser. So I will have a, a parse uh, presentation uh, function that you, it will be good for presentation, one for uh, audio. And uh, the last one uh, for the video. Okay, now how can I use this stuff? Okay, here I, want, I have the file that I want to parse. Uh, once again, I have this set of functions, I have more or less to put them again in a chain, 
okay? But I don't want to encode this chaining thing inside the function themselves, even because in this way they, they will be far less reusable, okay? Uh, what I can do is, uh, once again, put in all this function uh, inside the stream. So I will have, uh, uh, sorry, let me make all of this static. So I will have uh, the, the past text, and then I will have uh, the, um, the one for parsing uh, presentation, and uh, the one for uh, uh, parsing uh, what was the audio, and the last one was for the video, right? Uh, let me import this, okay. Uh, in this case, uh, Java is complaining because uh, it's not able to inference uh, which kind of stream this stuff that I'm putting inside the stream is, okay? So I need to help it, okay? Uh, I need uh, to help the Java type inference in, in this case. Uh, so wh what are uh, this stuff? Are, are of course functions uh, from file to optional or string. Okay. So what I can do now? Uh, I have, I can pass the file to all this function. So I can just do a map, uh, and uh, for each function, I do a function dot apply passing the file. Okay, what I have the, uh, at this point, I had a stream of function. Now I have a stream of optional. Okay, that is the result of the application of the file to all the parsing function, to all the parsing function, okay? Uh, then I want to filter. I want only the optional that give me a, uh, gave me a value. So I filter only the one that are present, okay? And then I can take the first one, And then I'm, I'm almost done, okay? So I had a stream of function, applied the, the file uh, to all this function, I uh, obtained a stream uh, of optional, I filtered only the optional uh, that is present that will be at most one in this case, uh, I, and I do find first, okay? Uh, what I have at this point? There's a small problem, sorry? Uh, y yes, you are missing a bit. Uh, I will have an optional of an optional, actually, okay? Because uh, I have, at this point, I have a, a stream of optional. I'm saying find first, and find first return an optional of the result. So I'll be returned with an optional of, the, of an optional of the result, okay? Of course, I don't want this uh, uh, double nested optional, uh, but uh, I can fix this uh, easily by doing a flat map. I don't want to do any transformation here, so I can just pass the identity function, okay? So this is just to flatting the two uh, level optional, okay? And at this point, I can just say, uh, uh, or else uh, throw, let's say, uh, uh, an exception, okay, and uh, I can possibly print this stuff, okay. Uh, yes. Why don't I use flat map? Why should I use flat map for the first one? I will be, you mean here, you mean here. Uh, 
I can't. I mean, let me think. Sorry. Good question. Uh, I, I have a, a function, I have a, a stream of, uh, of function here. I cannot use flat map. I mean, I want, at this point, uh, after the, the mapping, I want a stream of optional because I have to select uh, the one that is present. I cannot do flat map at this point. I want a stream of, of optional here. Do you agree? I thought it would work, but OK. okay. Uh, please, let's take this offline. I want to, to try this. Okay, uh, I think it won't it uh, won't work because uh, you will you will need a stream of optional at this point and then uh, uh, filter the one that is present. Uh, you cannot have a stream of value. You need a stream of optional at that point. So that's why I think it won't work. But uh, uh, let's take this offline. Thanks. Uh, okay, so uh, it is of course printing the result. But uh, what is actually happening here, okay? If you remember in the original object-oriented solution, it invoked the, 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 text, the text parser and then the presentation parser and then the audio parser and the audio parser was able to uh, get the job done and, uh, and uh, didn't bother the video parser at all, okay? What is happening here? I'm, Oh, I'm invoking the video parser or not? Who think that I'm invoking the video parser? Okay, a few of you. Uh, let's give it a try. So let's put here a system out to just to check if this stuff uh, is uh, invoked or not. Okay, as you can see, I'm not invoking the video parser. So it is, wor it is working exactly as the uh, chain of responsibility example, as the Gang of Four example. Why not? Because the stream is lazy, okay? You are forgetting the laziness of the stream. So what, what is happening here? It, it is not executing the f a mapping function on all the four uh, uh, parser at the same time. It is doing it with the first one, and then it filtering it, and uh, the first one will not be present, so it doesn't have find the first one, that is okay. We'll do the same with the second, and the third one will be okay, so it will be present. He, he has found the first one, and it doesn't need to, to uh, invoke the fourth. Make sense? Okay, okay. Uh, what I have? Oh, the interpreter. Okay. Uh, okay. I want to write a, a very simple interpreter that uh, interprets and evaluates this uh, uh, expression. Uh, the expression is written in uh, uh, reverse police notation, not because I'm a fan of this notation, but because it's very easy to parse uh, using a stack, okay? So what I do is that uh, I put 7, 10, 3 on the stack, then I find the minus, I, I do uh, 7 minus 3, I got 4, I put 4 on the stack, and so on until I get the result, okay? Uh, so I uh, created uh, a parser of this uh, 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 expression, using the interpreter pattern, okay? So I have an expression that can be interpreted, okay? And then I have uh, different uh, kinds, different implementation of this expression. I have the one, I had one that uh, uh, is interpreted by adding uh, a, a left and a right expression. The subtract that, that of course does the subtraction, the product that uh, multiplies the two. And then I have uh, one last expression that is the number itself, okay? Because I have to wrap 
the number inside our expression in order to create this stack, this stack of expression, okay? And then I, uh, I have a, a lookup method that tells me if something is an operator or not. Uh, and uh, in case it is an operator, uh, I have uh, this switch that returns me the right operator, okay? I'm not doing uh, any, any error check here, just for brevity, okay? And then uh, I interpret this stuff. So I start uh, with an empty stack. That is the way to uh, evaluate a reverse Polish notation expression. Uh, and if it is an operator, I take the first, uh, I pop the first two value from the stack and apply the operator to it. Uh, and otherwise, uh, it is a number, I take the number and I push it on the stack, okay? And at the end uh, of the operation, if the expression is well formed, I will have uh, only one value on the stack uh, and then I can pop it and uh, it will be, of course, a number. So I can uh, uh, call interpret on it and it will return this value, okay? So uh, let's give this a try. Uh, and uh, yes, so it is doing uh, uh, seven minus three, that is four. Uh, then it's, uh, 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 it's doing two plus one, that is three, and four by three is 12, okay? So this is the result. <laughs> Uh, let's do this uh, in a functional way as usual. Okay, what can I do? I can create, for instance, uh, uh, a map of this operation, okay? At, uh, how this map is made. I, w I have the key that is the symbol of the operation. And uh, the value of, the, uh, the, 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 of this map will be the operation itself that will be, of course, rep represented by a function. Uh, here I can use a, a binary operator between two int, okay? Uh, so I can say something like this, okay? And then I have to initialize this. So I can say, I that uh, the plus is mapped uh, with, uh, uh, with a function that does uh, A plus B. And of course, same thing for uh, uh, subtraction and multiplication. Okay? And then as usual, I can uh, take the main method of my original solution, okay? And uh, I can create a stack, but this time it can be simply a, step, a stack of integer. Okay, uh, what I do is uh, uh, taking the operation from the map, Okay, so if this is an operation, I will take as usual the, the left and uh, right value and I will put on the stack uh, the, the result of the operation. Okay, and in this other case, I can just put on the stack the number itself. Okay, and of course I don't need to call this interpret anymore because I have integer on my stack. Okay, so I can do exactly the same thing. And hopefully obtain exactly the same result. Okay, makes sense? Okay, last one is the visitor pattern. Okay, so this is an, another quite common problem. Uh, I have uh, to visit, to apply a given function to a different kind uh, of object, okay? So what I do is that uh, 
I implement this uh, visit pattern. Uh, I have a visit that can implement that can visit all uh, the objects on my domain that in my case are uh, square, circle, and rectangle. Uh, and I want to have different implementation of this uh, visitor, okay? The, the one implementation is uh, one that uh, calculates the area, so when it visits the square, it returns uh, the, the area of the square, and same thing for, for circle and for rectangle, and I have a, a similar uh, visitor for the perimeter, okay? So when I... Uh, I, I have uh, a list of figures, and I can use uh, these two visitors to uh, calculate uh, the sum of uh, both the area and the perimeter of my figures, okay? So let's try to do once again this in a slightly different way. Uh, the functional uh, uh, analogy of the visitor pattern is the pattern matching inside uh, in, in, uh, in a um, uh, functional programming style, okay? So what I can do is take in all these uh, classes. Okay. And of course, I just need uh, the, domain, uh, the domain object. I don't need all these. Uh, visiting inf infrastructure. Okay. Uh, and uh, of course I don't have pattern matching inside uh, with, with Java, okay? Uh, I created my uh, poor man uh, pattern matching class that is pretty simple. Uh, this is very basic, but uh, uh, if you want to, to do to have something more powerful, you can give a look uh, at Java, uh, Java Slang. That is a very powerful uh, functional library in Java. I suggest to give you to give a look at it. Uh, anyway, I have this uh, uh, I have this uh, uh, um, visitor, let's say, that uh, uh, takes a class. It returns me this, uh, this other object that uh, takes a function from that class to the result that I want to obtain, okay? Uh, let's see how it works because it will be easier. Uh, so I want to have a function that given an object, uh, a square, a circle, a rectangle in my domain will return uh, uh, for instance, the area of that uh, of that uh, figure. Okay, uh, so uh, um, I want a function from an object to a double. Okay, that is my area calculator in this case. Okay, and how can I define this? I'm, I I want to say that. Uh, uh, when I get a square, then I want to result, in this case, the area of the square, okay? So I have the square, and uh, here, as you can see, is uh, strongly typed. Here, the Java type inference is working. I said that uh, I'm matching a square, and uh, here, the uh, uh, code completion is give me side, that is uh, the side of the square, okay? So this is, of course, the uh, area of the square, and then I can do the same uh, for the circle. Uh, this will be of course, and uh, same thing for the rectangle. Okay, 
So I have this function that when it's passed uh, with a square, it will return to the area of the square. If it's passed with a circle, it will be returned with the area of the circle, and so forth. So if I want to uh, calculate the sum of this, the sum of the area of this stuff, I can just uh, put this uh, list of objects inside the stream and then uh, use this function as my mapping function. Okay. And then I can do a reduction operation. Uh, and this will be my result. Okay. Okay, same result. Make sense? Okay, sorry, I'm done with my time. Uh, I can take question of offline if you want. I, we can review that uh, uh, flat map thing. Uh, thanks for your attention. Mm -hmm.